So just a quick heads up, I've wiped out everything from the previous tutorial, so this isn't a continuation. But I have created all the animations for Anna's directional movement and a fiery blaze animation ahead of time. And I've also added two sprites to the scene, but that's pretty much it. And in this video, we're going to focus on input and physics. Alright, so let's get to it. We're going to add the variable keyboard to our scene and set it equal to input keyboard.addKeys using the WASD keys for movement. And then an update function that will be called with time, which is the total time elapsed and delta, which is our frames per second in milliseconds. And inside that is where we will call and check if the D key is down. We'll move Anna right by incrementing X 64 pixels every second, which is roughly one pixel per update. And then we'll play her walking right animation. If you're using TypeScript, we can assert that this dot keyboard is an object that is filled with input keyboard keys to get better type suggestions. And we'll just do the same thing we just did, but with moving left. Moving on with mouse input, we can listen to a pointer move event on the input manager, which will pass us an object of type input pointer and will be called every time the mouse moves. We can also check if the player is holding the mouse down and if it is, we'll add fire sprites that play the blaze animation and then destroy it when the animation finishes. So, moving on to physics, we have three choices, unless you want to build your own. But, we have Arcade, which is axis aligned bounding boxes. And it's for simple shaped collisions, like boxes and circles. It's not good for the maximum precision. It doesn't have as much features. But, it's fast and it's simple, and that's what we're going to use. We have Matter, which has much more features, with top notch precision, and more rigid defined bodies. Though, keep in mind, it's a little more complex. And then we have Impact, which is very similar to Arcade, but it can do a little more. And it came from Impact.js, but it's not well documented, and I'd say it's the least updated and used of the three. All right, so to enable physics, we have to go into our game config file in the main.ts, and we're gonna add the physics object with default Arcade, and an Arcade object, and we'll enable debug to draw rectangles around our sprites. So back into our play scene, we can add physics sprite by just adding physics before add. And this will add a sprite with the physics body. And if you want to add an already existing sprite, you can pass it into the physics add dot existing. But I'm not gonna use that for this tutorial. All right, so now we can move using the velocity instead of directly modifying the position. And to remove the sliding, we'll set the velocity x to 0 when they're not pressing A or D. And then we'll do the same for the y directions.
All right, so for collisions, we can manually call physics world collide and passing in the two things we want collision on. And to stop the push on collision, we can set immovable to true on the hooded. And it can still be moved, just not pushed. And I know it's a really weird named API. Collide will also take a callback, which will be called on collide. And it will be called with the two objects we passed in, so we'll just destroy them both when they touch. Okay, and to fix the crash, we need to only move Anna when she's active, so when she's alive. We can also have Phaser automatically handle our collision calls by using Add Collider. And it does the same thing, but if I recall correctly, using Add Collider, it optimizes the calls. But don't quote me on that. We can call Accelerate to Object, which will take one object and accelerate it to the direction of the second object. And it crashed because the hooded gets destroyed and no longer has an acceleration property, so we're calling on an undefined object. And to fix it, you just do if undefined or not. But anyways, moving on to groups, we'll create a group of assassins and add the hooded guy in it. And then we'll just loop over all the group members to accelerate to Anna. It's a little unfair, so we'll make the fires collidable by creating a fire attacks group. And adding the created instances on press to the group. And of course, we have to add a collider, which will destroy the fire and the hooded on collision. To spice things up a little, we'll add two assassins for every one that is killed. And we'll just use a switch to randomize the positions onto the outer sides. It's a bit unfair, so we'll set Anna's movement speed to 128. I should have used a variable, but we're going to go over classes soon. And we'll also set the size of her hitbox to 4050. And if it's off, we can use set offset to position the hitbox. You can also set collide world bound to true if you don't want a game object moving out of the canvas or any defined area.
And if you guys don't notice, when she's moving multi-directional, the animation stops playing. So we're going to not tie it down to the key press, rather the velocity. So if the velocity is greater than zero, she's moving right, so we'll play right. And vice versa for all the other directions. Alrighty, so that's about it for this one. I have yet to cover optimizing with pooling, static bodies, and a lot more, but we'll go over them in the future. For now though, this is the good stress test. So if you open up your console, go to this hamburger sandwich menu, hit rendering, show FPS meter, and you can see how much Phaser can handle our unoptimized code. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. And you know which buttons to hit below.